everyone welcome back to Joe Man's Land this is gonna be an interesting video first things first people keep on asking me why I'm wearing a hat and it's because my hair looks like this it looks crazy I haven't had time to get a haircut in the longest time so that's why I wear a hat in most of my videos all right so let's get into what today's video is actually gonna be about which is all about my experience droning both here in Canada and abroad I've been using a drone for the last few years. I started out using one in South Korea with my first drone, which was a Phantom 3, which was an awesome drone, which was then replaced by a Mavic Mini, which I then crashed and replaced with another Mavic Mini and then crashed. And now I'm onto my Mavic Air. So if you're new to the drone space, one of the things you might've encountered is this whole 249 gram rule. Any drone that's above 250 grams, you legally have to get a permit for in many countries. Now, a country like South Korea, you actually don't. All you have to be cognizant of is where you're flying. And there's actually a drone app that you can get while you're there that shows you where you can and cannot fly. But ever since I got back, I hadn't really been flying because I didn't have a permit. Today we'll be going through the process of how you can actually get that permit as well as some challenges you might find along the way. So we're just gonna first of all start by typing in a drone permit. Canada, Canada, I mean a spelling mistake. And we're just gonna go through some of the differences between the different permits as well as the uh, pricing that goes into them. So there's lots of different uh, companies that will actually give you training, uh, they'll show you how to fly your drone and they'll actually give you study materials for getting uh, both your uh, beginner and advanced operations permit permits, which is really great. Um, I think if you're new to droning or you've got a large budget, it would definitely be something worth doing. That is something I didn't do. I've never actually taken a uh, droning course or um, been certified that way. I've done it all myself, hence why I crashed two Mavic Minis. That's a story we'll get into at a later date. All right, here we go. Let's get into the Government of Canada website. So as you can see, this is the Government of Canada. So it is a federal permit, which is great. So it will be recognized all across Canada, not in the United States. If you're going to the US, I'm not gonna get into that, but there's a whole different set of permits you have to get. All right, so here's the first thing. Drone pilots must carry a drone pilot certificate at all times while operating a drone. A valid drone permit certificate is a printed or electronic document issued by Transport Canada. No other form of certification is accepted. Here's that rule that we're talking about with the 250 grams. You need a drone pilot license to fly drones over 250 grams, including 25 kilograms. Obviously within different weight classes, you need different permits, but moral of the story, anything past a Mavic Mini or Autel Nano, um, you need to have that permit, whether that be the advanced or beginner. Okay, let's go through the penalties if you do not follow the rules. Fines for individuals, up to $1,000 for flying without a drone pilot certificate. $1,000 for flying an unregistered or unmarked drone. And so on and so on, it's a lot of money. So guys, if you're gonna be flying without a permit, just be aware of the risks you're taking. It's super expensive if you get caught. The visual line of sight is something that the government of Canada really hammers in both in the test as well as on some of the different pages they have on different rules and regulations. Visual line of sight means that you can see your drone at all times. Okay, so once you get to the bottom of this page, you've got all different um, categories. First one being register your drone. This is not free. None of this is free. You have to pay for each of these but it's only five bucks. So all you, all you have to do is go down to how to register your drone. We're not gonna go through that, but you just click drone management portal and or register your drone and it will take you through the process of registering it. Make sure you have your certificate first and make sure you print off the certificate uh, registration as well as a marking that you can put on your drone, whether that be in a sticker or a piece of tape or you can write down the uh, registration number. Those are really, really important. Okay, so that's enough about registration. Now let's go through to the more difficult piece, getting your drone pilot certificate. So let's go through the two different categories of the two different certificates. The first one being basic operations. For basic operations, you need to take just an online exam. If you pass a small basic exam, you'll be issued a pilot certificate for basic operations. You need to print this off and make sure you carry it with you at all times. Now let's talk about the advanced operations. You need to pass the online exam. You actually have to successfully pass a flight review. Um, 
the uh, um, Transport Canada has actually got partners all across Canada, so you'd have to look up in your region and see which uh, registered partners are there for you to do this test. Then you have to apply for a cert uh, pilot certificate, so it's actually even more intense past that. So you do your online exam, you do the in-person uh, test, and then you have to get a pilot certificate. So you're basically getting a full-on pilot uh, license, which is pretty crazy when you think about the fact it's just for a drone. And let's talk just a little bit about study materials that you can use to study for the beginner and advanced operation permits. I'm gonna give a quick shout out to a guy who I think has got a great YouTube channel all about different Canadian rules for droning, which is Don Drones On. His channel is above my right hand here, which is pointing to the left side of me, which is confusing, but you get my point. He's got some great resources that can help you study for the exam if you don't want to uh, do it through a different, uh, through a drone academy in your city. So definitely check out his videos. He's got some great stuff. So where can you fly once you've got your beginner or advanced operation permit? The first place you want to have a look is the Nav Canada Interactive Drone Map. As you can see on the screen here, it outlines all the different areas where you can and cannot fly that is uh, covered by federal mandate. As you can see, a lot of the spots where you might want to go, like in the provincial parks, are of course not allowed which really, really, really sucks. But it is what it is, and that's just the legislation. But what this map doesn't show you is the provincial regulations. So we're just gonna talk about Alberta because that's where I am and that's what I know a little bit about and it's still something I am learning about every single day. Um, you can't fly inside cities, you can't fly in your airports, you can't fly in provincial or city parks. So where can you fly? I think that's the bigger question is where are you legally allowed to fly? And there really isn't um, a lot of resources online that give you a clear roadmap on this. The first thing I like to do is I like to look at the provincial map of the different provincial parks and use that in conjunction with the Nav Canada app. That helps me figure out where I definitely can not. At this point, I then like to have a look at the public land use areas or PLUZs in the province. And we're gonna be jumping into which of these PLUZs or public land use areas are actually worth going to. So we'll kind of rank them from best to worst. So that way then if you're just getting into droning now, you don't waste time on a bunch of areas that are which are probably meant more for quadding and hunting. And then also we'll be looking at within these public land use areas, where are you actually allowed to drone? Because if you go into a provincial park public land use area, which is a designation, and you're in the PLUZ and you're in a day use area, you actually aren't allowed to fly there. So even within these public land use areas, depending on where it falls, you might not actually be allowed to drone there. And we'll explore that as we, is it the ones that I think are worth going to? You know, that's what you might be thinking about this video. Oh, well, Joey didn't go into the technical aspects of the exam. And I didn't because I'm not actually allowed to. You aren't allowed to share exam results or um, do the test with a screen share and show people the answers obviously because then your permit would get taken away so i'm not going to risk that but what i will say is the test was very difficult um i failed the first time i had to take it a second time it only cost me 20 dollars total taking it two times which isn't necessarily a huge deal but you know i think that um a lot of the questions on it were very long-winded and difficult and not things that i've ever needed to know when I've been out droning. And I've been, like I said, I've been droning for years. I've done it all over the world. So, you know, to have an exam like that with questions like this, I just, I think it's overkill. And that's what I would love to see in the comments below. What do you guys think about the government of Canada's rules and regulations for droning? Do you think it makes it too difficult to get into? Or is it something that you would still do in order to fly your drone? I love the angle you can get and the way you can see the world from super high up. It completely changes your perspective when you are taking photo and video. And it's something that I will continue to do for the rest of my life. But maybe you don't feel the same way, so tell me down below, are you into droning? Have you considered doing it? Have you run into some issues I maybe didn't highlight? You know, this is a community and that's what I want to uh, reiterate through all my videos is I wanna get your comments below because it's gonna really help me decide what I put on this channel moving forward. But with that guys, we'll leave the video here, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and thank you so much for watching. And in the meantime, go out, take lots of photos every single day, and make sure that you're making the most out of the gear you have. See you guys in the next video.